What's going on, everybody? Your man Eric Wilson here on the NSN Combine Twitch TV channel yet again. Uh, since Uncle Jay and I had such a great response from last night talking about the athletes who will be attending the National Scouting Combine hosted at the Grand Park Events Center in Indianapolis, Indiana, coming up in three days, March 7th to the 11th. As always, make sure you check them out, nationalscoutingcombine.com. So, yes, back for part two is my man. I call him Uncle Jay. Uncle Jay is back in the building with me here. We're going to go over some other athletes. What's going on, man? How are you? How you doing, Eric? Good to talk I'm, to you again. I know. We had such a great response. I figured we keep the show going here tonight. So I want to talk to you about some of these athletes because I definitely want to get your thoughts on them. Um, and you know what? I've got a list of names here. I'm just going to run down with you. Give me your thoughts. Let's start with uh, Sterling Lowry. Oh, I tell you what, that that kid is is a real deal. Uh, very physical. Uh, always, always, always around the ball. He's a 5'10", 185-pound DB out of Wagner. Uh, and during his Wagner Pro Day, put up some phenomenal numbers. Uh, you know, if if he can come into our event and put up the same type of numbers he put up at Wagner's Pro Day, kid might get a shot because he, he's very quick. He's very physical. Uh, he's one of those lockdown corners that you want to get. Uh, and he can play against some of the bigger guys just because of how physical he is. He, I would expect him to be on somebody's radar after the event. Wow. That's high praise coming from you. I know that. So let's talk about another guy, uh, Aaron Donaldson. Uh, yeah. Aaron, Aaron Donaldson is uh, – I'll be honest, I watched about 14 seconds of his film. That's all it took. The kid, the kid is just, he's 6'3", 225 out of Sacred Heart. He's a linebacker. Um, I absolutely love this kid. I, he, he's got a motor that won't quit. Looks like he probably has about four or five, four, six speed game speed. Okay. Uh, it'll be interesting to get him in there and, and test him and find out exactly what his actual, uh, 40 time is, his pro agility time. Uh, He's he's one of those guys that I, I wish I would have seen him up against some better talent because at Sacred Heart, he dominated at that level. Um, is he going to be able to go up, dominate against, a, a, you know, a D1 tackle the way he dominated when he was playing at uh, Sacred Heart? So it's going to be interesting. Um I actually sent his film to a friend of mine that is a former NFL linebacker. And he said for the life of him, he cannot figure out why this kid was not drafted last year. Hmm. And the only thing we can come up with is the fact that he came out of a smaller program and he just got missed, which is unfortunate because the kid can flat out play. Uh, like I said, I absolutely love this kid. I had a kid a couple of years ago, Stephen Bowers, that I, I felt the same way about. And Stephen got invited into the Minnesota Vikings minicamp. So in my opinion, this kid's a little bit better. He's a little bit bigger. Uh, Stephen was kind of six foot. You know, he's a little bit short for an outside linebacker. Uh, they tried to move him inside. He'd never played there before. So, But I think this kid right here is a real deal. I, I honestly believe that a team should take a shot at this kid because he can play. He can cover backs out of the backfield. He's very, very quick around the corner. He cuts that corner like nobody I've ever seen. Uh, so, Uncle Jay, talk to me about that real quick before I go down the rest of this list. You know, when you, know, when you talk very highly about an athlete, clearly you've done, as I know you do time and time again because you're excellent at what you do, You've done your homework. You've done your research. You've seen so many young athletes come through not only the National Scouting Combine, but through other events that you have been at. What is it about, Aaron, with when it comes to you and the eye test? What intangible does he have that maybe some, some other athletes don't that, that makes you give him the nod? 
Well, I, he's, he's got a, a very quick first step around the edge. Uh, a lot of tackles that he went up against, he was just not able to – they weren't able to get their hands on him. And even if they did, he, he uses his hands in such a way that he's able to get off those blocks and still make it around the corner. There were, there were a couple of times where the tackle pushed him past the box – he beat the tackle and still made the sack. Uh, he's he's just that quick. I mean, I one of one of the films I watched on him in a game. He ran down a running back from the opposite side of the field, and then the running back only picked up about two yards around the other end. So I, he, his quickness is just unbelievable. And like I said, if if he comes in and his test numbers equate to what his film shows. This kid, I, I can't believe, like my buddy said, I can't believe he didn't get drafted. And the only thing we can come up with, you know, Sacred Heart, it's not a, a huge program. It's not an Alabama. Right. I guarantee right. you this right now. If that kid would have been at an Alabama, a Clemson, a Michigan, Ohio State, he'd be playing in the NFL right now. Wow. I mean, and that's huge, you know, and that's why I'm so thankful to be a part of a great event like the National Scouting Combine, because those types of athletes who are just seeking their opportunity, but then who measure up to those that are already either in the NFL or who go to a power five conference who are getting the opportunity to be looked at by NFL scouts. I mean, it's just it's 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 huge. And that's why I'm so thankful that these events are going on and that every year it keeps getting better and better. So, again, for those just joining us, talking to the director of player personnel for the National Scouting Combine, Jay Wilson. So. All right, Uncle Jay, here's another one for you. Uh, Louis. Kino Kinosis. Kinones. Kinones. Thank you. Yep. Five, nine hundred ninety pound running back out of Valley City State. Never heard of Valley City State, right? No. <laughs> All right. Me no. neither. <laughs> but this this kid can play. Uh, one of one of our interns that does some scouting with me and works close with me uh, sent me this kid, and he said that he reminds him of Danny Woodhead. And then when I watch the film, that's exactly who this kid looks like. Uh, he's not super big for a running back but he explodes through a hole like you wouldn't believe. And I, I'm really hoping that he comes in. If he puts up a good 40 time and can show teams that he has that ability to uh, have that home run speed, this kid should get a shot. You know, there's not a whole lot of guys like him that get through the hole the way he does. He's got great feet good hips when he goes through the hole. Uh, but two things I want to see from him. I want to see his 40 time to see if he has that speed. And I want to see his pro agility to make sure his lateral movement isn't just something I'm, I'm seeing on film that he can replicate it, that he can do it time and time again. All right. And, and that's going to be the thing because we know the, the typical life expectancy, if you will, of a running back in the NFL is – three and a half to four years. Right. So you have got to make your impact immediately if you want to sustain yourself. But then there are, it's the flip side of it where you're a true workhorse and then they want to run you into the ground. And, and that's why the longevity isn't what it should be for running backs. So, you know, as much as his 40, I, I'm sure is going to mean a lot to a lot of people. You know, my thing is, man, do what you got to do. But you got to break the mold because that is the one position that I feel truly has been lost and is starting to make its way back. You know, we right. have guys like a Saquon Barkley, of course, who is head and shoulders. You know, he, he's a generational talent, if you will. But I can also look at a guy like Adrian Peterson, who's been in the league for so long and has broken that mold at the running back position. So when it comes to running backs, you know, I always want them to be successful because I want them to have that longevity. And if this kid lives up to the expectation that, that you and others are putting before him and he can hit the hole, like you say, and just, you know, 
make the move, shift, do whatever he's got to do and be successful, then I want to see him progress. I want to see him move forward. I want to see him get that second and possibly even third contract because I enjoy that. As a six foot, 200 pound guy, 210 now, I got to lose some weight, but you know, <laughs> yeah. that, uh, that's been my thing. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I love the running back position. And again, you know, you know me growing up in Philly, I've seen them all. I've had the Deuce Staley's of the world. I've had right. the LaShawn McCoy's of the world. I currently have the Miles Sanders and the Boston Scott's and the Corey Clement of the world. So I just I, I resonate with that position, not only from a professional standpoint, but also from a personal standpoint. So I really hope this young man is able to succeed. I really do. Right. And and the the good thing about him is is. You go back to an old school scat back. That's what this kid is. If okay. he can run routes out of the backfield and he can catch the ball and he can use his speed and his agility to prevent taking those huge hits that those running backs take, he's going to last a lot longer than than just one of those guys. He's not He's not a Derrick Henry. He's not going to go up the middle for four yards in a cloud of dust, although Derrick goes for 40 in a cloud of dust. Pretty but, much. <laughs> You know, it, he's got to be able to use his assets to be able to play the game for a longer period of time than, like you said, two and a half, three and a half years, which is typical for a running back, especially one that's 5'9", 185 pounds, you know. Right. Yeah. So I, I'm curious to see that. Let's move on here. So here's another guy for you. Andre Thomas Cobb Jr. What are your thoughts on him, Uncle Jay? Uh, it. And, and Andre, if you're listening, partner, don't take this the wrong way. This is a no-name kid out of a JUCO, but he is an absolute stud. The kid's 6'4", 223 as a wide receiver. Wow. All right? Automatically fits the eye test. Just looking at him, the kid's a physical specimen. The really good part about him is he's physical. And he has the speed to run away from guys. He's very difficult to get off his route because of his size and because of his physicality. It, it, a cornerback's not going to just put bump him up at the line of scrimmage and throw him off his route. It's not going to happen. He's not DK Metcalf, but he's pretty darn close. Wow. Okay. DK, DK, I, I love the kid. He had a great season this year. Uh, if he's another one of those guys, if he comes in and puts up strong numbers in the events, this is a kid you'll be watching. This no name kid that I call him, you'll be watching him on Sundays. If he can catch a football as well as he shows on film, which sometimes it's hard for us because a lot of times we only get highlight film. You know, we dig a little deeper. I, I dug a little bit deeper on this kid and watched some actual game film. His highlight film and his game film, there's not a whole lot of difference. You get the same kid in either one of them. He runs good routes. He's very physical, like I said. And and at 6'4", 223, he fits the eye test. He really yeah. does. And, Eric, I, I think, you know, when you see this kid, you're going to be like, hmm, you know, it is one of those things that make you go, hmm. Okay. And that's All what right. this Fair. is. Fair enough. I'm I'm excited to see him. And you know, wide receivers, uh, you know, and, and again, I'll say it to him. I'll, I'll I'll echo the same sentiment. Andre, when you watch this, um, don't take this personally, but the wide receivers are uh, they're a bunch of divas to me because they want that highlight reel. Listen, I spoke to Curtis Coulard. And I asked him point blank. I said, why the wide receiver position? He's like, I want to be in the limelight. I was like, okay, enough said. You a wide receiver. When you come right. out with answers right. like that, then I already know what type of individual you are. But that's why I'm very excited to see them. Now, I just want to check something really quick while I got you. Wide receivers, I believe they are the same day as the quarterbacks. Let me just show everybody once again the screen here. So, yes, they show up on March 9th and they get to do their thing on March 10th. March 10th is going to be a very interesting day because between the quarterbacks, the wide receivers, and the tight ends, you've got a bunch of limelight athletes that want to truly come out there and showcase who they are. So I think we're going to get something special on, on, on the 10th 
when they come in. So let me give you another name here. Enrique Yeni. What are your thoughts on him, Uncle Jay? He's 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 one of the kids that was one of the first ones to sign up for this event. The kid is out of Condelps, Mexico. Plays in a Mexican league down there. Has an absolute cannon for a leg. You know me, I'm a former kicker. Jimmy's a former kicker. We yep. we, we love these guys. Uh, we should run a four-day event just for kickers, but you know how that is. Uh, yeah. He's got – such a strong leg it's not even funny he's a lefty uh very accurate on long range i mean the kid stands out there and hits 55 and 60 yard field goals like it's an extra point there there's no nothing about it that looks bad sounds bad it, everything is right down the middle uh, the film i've seen He's kicking on a grass field that looks like one me and you used to play in in the inner city with oh, wow. hardly little tufts of grass. And oh yeah. And, and he makes everything he looks at. Yeah. So we're excited to get him on a turf field and find out exactly what this kid can do. What's really interesting about Enrique is the fact that I also dug up some punting film on this kid. He's a hmm. left footed punter. And he's a better punter than he is a kicker. And he's an outstanding kicker. So that tells you what I think about his punting abilities. And yes, you know sir. as well as I do, uh, I'm not going to name names, but I know a couple of players that aren't on rosters but travel around every week because they're left-footed punters. And the team is going to play a left-footed punter. So they bring these guys in. They pay them for the week. They punt for two or three days. They fly back home. They do it again next week. They make a good living at just being a left-footed punter. Hey, shout out to the lefties in the world. I'm one of them, so I, I, I'm right I'm there with you. you. So, so is Jimmy, and I could never figure it out. But um, <laughs> he, any teams out there that want a left-footed punter that on the 10 punts I watched him do on film, he probably averaged 58 yards a punt. Whoa. With okay. big hang time. I'm All telling right. you, like, like I said, I think he's a phenomenal kicker, but he's a much better punter than he is a kicker. All right, fair enough. Uncle Jay, I got to take 30 seconds. I got to pay some bills. More with uh, Absolutely. More with my man, Uncle Jay, here on NS Combine, Twitch TV, and your man, Eric Wilson Sports Arena. We'll be right back. And we're back here, NS Combine, Twitch TV, your man Eric Wilson with the Sports Arena, alongside Jay Wilson, the Director of Player Personnel for the National Scouting Combine. Folks, trust me, next week you want to tune in to this channel right here because of this event hosted at the Grand Park Event Center beginning on March 7th, going all the way to March 11th, nationalscoutingcombine.com. All right, Uncle Jay, let's talk about some of the big dogs that are coming to this event. And by big dogs, you know I mean quarterbacks because um, I've heard one name that's been circulating around coming to the event. And when I first heard the name, I had to, I had to, it was a head scratch. I was like, wait a minute, wait, wait, are we talking about the same guy? But actually, it's his son. Let's talk about Vinny Testaverde, Vincent, excuse me, Testaverde, coming <laughs> to the National Scouting Combine. Yes. Vincent Testaverde Jr. is coming in. Uh, he's a 6'1 quarterback out of Albany. Uh, I believe he spent some time at Texas Tech. He spent a little bit of time at Miami, but the, the key part of his career was at Albany. Uh, at Albany, threw for over 1,700 yards, 11 touchdowns, 53% completion rating. The kid's 6'1". I, I mean, he fits what you need in a quarterback, can make all the throws, has no problem making the throws. And don't get me wrong, as much as I liked his dad when his dad was playing, this kid's not his dad. And if anybody expects him to be his dad, then then that's just a disservice to this kid. Okay. He's his own quarterback. He plays extremely well. He's got a 
good head on his shoulder, which you would expect. I mean, he's he's been taught by one of the better quarterbacks that have played in the NFL. Uh, he signed a contract with BC Lions, but uh, I wasn't able to see a whole lot on that. But I'm assuming because of COVID and everything, that kind of fell through the wayside because he signed last January. Um, but we're excited about having Vincent in. Uh, I think he's going to put up some great numbers. I know he's got the arm that teams are looking for. And, you know, like we talked about, teams are looking for quarterbacks. They're yes. across the league. You can say what you want to, you know, is Russell going to Dallas for Dak and Dak going to hey, Seattle? Whoa, whoa, Russell? whoa, whoa. Why are we bringing up Dallas, Uncle Jay? No, we I, I apologize. I forgot about oh. that. I, this is a no Dallas zone. I forgot, buddy. It's fine. Uh, I've had to I've had to hear from some of the some of the athletes coming, and I'm just like, really? But I, I understand he's not going to Dallas. Let him go to Chicago or, or somewhere else. Just don't, right. don't come to I, Dallas. I don't, I don't see that trade happening either. But, you know, there's a lot of people out there that – but, you know, there are a lot of teams that are looking for a quarterback. Uh, right. And they're looking for a franchise quarterback that can step in and start right away. Is Vincent that guy? I'm not sure yet. I'll let you know after Wednesday. But – I do believe that he's somebody that deserves to be in camp. And he's been in camp. He was in camp with Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He was in their mini camp, and he was also in regular training camp with them. Right. So, obviously, the kid has something. You know, it, it, I, I don't think I, – I, as much as people want to think this, you don't get into the NFL based on your name. It just doesn't happen. All right. My my last name could be Lombardi. And trust me, I'm not getting in the NFL. All right. Fair Been enough. there, done that. Yes, Been sir. There. But, you know, the, the kid can flat out play. He really can. He can make all the throws that are that they need. Uh, he throws a very, very catchable ball, which you'll hear me say that about quite a few of the quarterbacks that are coming in. That's a big thing with me. Uh it doesn't do you any good if you throw a laser from eight yards and the guy has no chance of catching it. Right. You know, he throws a very catchable ball and he throws a very good long ball. All right. Listen, if he checks all the boxes, there's going to be a team that is definitely going to invite him at least for a look. And the fact that he's been in many camps and uh, training camps with other NFL teams you know, it only stands to reason that at some point he is going to get his opportunity. I'm just right. glad that we get a chance to see him at the National Scouting Combine and actually just get to add more of a highlight reel, if you will, to what this young man is capable of doing. So I I'm excited. So another guy, quarterback, Corey Murphy. Give me your thoughts yeah. on him. Uh, Corey, Corey is – Corey's one of those quarterbacks that uh, can make all the throws. Okay. But his biggest asset is the fact that in his film, using his eyes, he can make a defensive back go in totally the wrong direction. And then you've got a wide receiver that's wide open. He uses his eyes very well in the pocket. He uh, okay. goes through progression well. He looks the defensive backs off. He helps – his wide receivers get open. I mean, he's he's been around this game for a little while. Corey, Corey's been out there for a little bit. Uh, he's a wily veteran, anticipates the throws. He knows where the gap's going to be. He knows where his receivers are going to be. And he's very accurate. He hits what he aims at. I'm curious to see that. I love that drill that we de that that is done on the field where it is the quarterback to receiver, and if this young man holds up to what you just said, there's going to be some precision passing that I'm going to be very excited to see. So, Uncle Jay, I've told Jimmy this: we need to change the name from National Scouting Combine to International Scouting Combine. Yeah, because we some do. of the talent that is just coming in from all over the country. I mean, last year we had Armand Van Rensburg, his first time in the States. I do. He was his <laughs> first time in the States, and his first time here, he came to the National Scouting Combine, and I was like, whoa, this is huge. So I, I, I'm telling Jimmy, change the name to International. But 
I want to talk about the brothers that are coming from Suriname because I had the chance to interview one of them, and that was Donovan Dango. Now, I know I believe there's two other brothers. And all three of them. Leandro and Sean. Yeah, and all three of them are coming. The interesting piece about Donovan when I was talking to him was he wanted to be or he wanted to make it very clear that anybody who comes to this event after watching him on the bench press, run the 40, do the drills, there should not be a doubt in their mind as to why they will not give him an invite into a an, an, into any training camp or any team. So I got to get your thoughts on this young man because he's very high on himself, but it seems like he's got that hunger inside of him. Have Have you seen him? I the, I, the I, I, had, is, I saw him just on camera. The The kid is huge. I mean, <laughs> I I watched video of him pulling probably a ten ton truck. Uh, wow. he, he is a national strongman winner. He's a power lifter. Is he a football player? We don't know yet. That's part of the beauty of this whole thing. He moves extremely well. Uh, but he is a big body. I mean, there is no doubt about it. He is a big man. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I want to say he's 6'5", 325 pounds, somewhere in that range. Okay. He is a big individual. And if if he can get with a program that is willing to take him on as a project, the kids the kid could be very good. Wow. That that I mean that's Listen, he left an impression in my mind. And again, 6'5", 330, offensive lineman. I was just like, when I spoke to him, I was just like, okay. So let's talk about his brother. His brother, Sean, is a quarterback at 6'4", 264. What are your thoughts on him? Right. Uh, Sean's raw. I, You know, he sent us some video of him doing dropbacks and rollouts and passing and uh, got to be honest, we're probably going to put him with Phil the night before, and they're going to work on a couple of things. The kid okay. has a very strong arm. The problem is it was hard for us to tell a whole lot about him because of the fact it looked like he was using a football that his hand wrapped all the way around. He's another big individual. Uh, so I either he has extremely large hands or he was using a little bit smaller football. But he he is a point guard for the, the Suriname national basketball team. So we know he has good hands. We know he has good footwork. Uh, it's just going to be – can it equate to him being a quarterback in one of the leagues? Worst case scenario, we turn him into a defensive end. Mm. I, he's got the size it, I know that's going to be interesting, though, because, you know, sometimes a player, an athlete doesn't want to switch positions. Now, a lot of these men that I've talked to, they started out one way and then they have transitioned, whether it be offense to defense or defense to offense. Right. I am just that quarterback position is tricky. You know, sometimes guys yeah. aren't willing to go from quarterback to D line. They might go quarterback to tight end or quarterback to wide receiver, but quarterback to D line? You gotta you gotta realize here, Eric, that, that we're talking about three young men that are coming from Suriname that have never played this game before. Okay. All so right. there I'm I'm sure with enough persuasion. However, I really want to see the kid succeed as a quarterback. I really do. He, he doesn't have bad footwork on his drop back passes, on his rollouts. He doesn't have bad footwork. He is actually a decent enough athlete that if he had somebody explain it to him for 10 minutes, he's going to be able to incorporate it into what he is supposed to do. Right now, everything that young man knows about being a quarterback is probably learned off of YouTube. Okay. 
right. So that's why we want to get him with Phil, and I want to talk with him. Uh, and I really think that given the right information, he's a good enough athlete that he can do something with that. You know, is he an NFL quarterback? No, but I don't think he, he thinks that either. Uh, but is there a league that he could play in? Yeah, I think there is. All right. So let's talk about the last brother, uh, Leandro, who is a defensive lineman, 6'7", 270. Yeah. Uncle Jay, what's up with this guy? Come on. I mean, this guy screams defensive lineman. He he does. And the really good part about it is he's a, a national champion freestyle wrestler. So we know he uses his hands well. We know he has good footwork. Uh, it's just going to be a matter of seeing how well he performs. If he can take the information we give him and he can perform well on these combine events, somebody's going to take a flyer on this kid. I mean, they're they're going to bring him in and take a look at him. He's got the size. He has the speed. Let's see if we can get him to do it through the combine event, put up some good numbers, and we can get his information out to some people. Because, I, like you said, at his size, he screams D end. I mean, there's just no doubt about it. Listen, now, you it's can't. Be a matter of, you know, can he take what he learns – and what we tell him, and can he turn it into a, a profit? And that's basically it. You can't teach six seven. I mean, no. that's just. Uh -uh. I'm just saying, Uncle Jay. Who else you got for me? I know you got. I know you got a few surprise guys in there that I, that I, we haven't talked about. Yeah, I I do. Uh, I tell you what, the the one kid that uh, we we didn't talk about is Warren Thomas. Warren Thomas is a 6'3", 245-pound defensive lineman out of Midland. Okay. Uh, kid had an absolutely fantastic hula bowl. Very agile, quick off the ball, can can beat the uh, tackle around the end. He, he cuts the corner very nicely. Uh, if he runs a good 40, Mm-hmm. And when I say a good 40, if he runs a 4 5, 4 6 range 40, I, teams are going to be all over this kid. They, they really are. At 6'3, 245 D end, that can rush the passer and he has great speed like that, they, teams would be ridiculous not to, not to bring him into camp. Uh, all right. One, Give one, me one other one. Kid, one, one other kid I got is uh, Jorge Reina. Jorge is a quarterback out of Fresno State. All right? Six foot, 210 quarterback. We had been talking back and forth with Jorge the other day. Uh, unfortunately, his, his grandfather, had, he was in the midst of a funeral. Uh, his grandfather passed away, which, Jorge, if you're listening to this, you know, uh, you have all our condolences. Uh, but the kid was kind enough to get back to us and we worked some stuff out with his agent. We were able to get him in. Uh, he's going to fly in from California. Uh, he absolutely checks all the boxes. This is another kid that I look at and I'm like, uh, why wasn't this kid drafted? Right. Why, you know, what, what am I not seeing that, some of the NFL teams and some of the CFL teams saw that I didn't see. Uh, he doesn't panic in the pocket. He, he's not afraid to pull the ball down and run with it. He has very good speed, but his first thought is to throw the ball. So he's not going to tuck it and run just because he feels a little bit of stuff around his feet. He's, he's very calm in the pocket. Okay. Uh, he can move around, slides the pocket. He, he throws the ball into very tight windows, which therein lies the issue. Yeah. The young man had 11 INTs. Ooh, okay. I'm thinking, All right. I'm thinking that's that kind of shocks some people. However, all his other intangibles are there. He checks every box. He throws the mid-range ball 
like a dart. I mean, it gets there and it gets there quick. His long ball, I made a comment to the intern that scouts with me today on the phone. I said, you know, he throws a long ball like Russell Wilson, that kind of long ball that drops mm -hmm. in from the top. It's almost you can't defend it. And that's the kind of accuracy he has on the long ball. Most of the picks he threw at Fresno were because of him trying to force a ball in a tight window. If he can get away from that, this kid has every shot in the world of, of signing with the team. I mean, he has everything you want to see in him. Uh, if you watch his film, you can actually see his head move through his progression until he finds an open receiver, and then the ball is gone. And, I mean, it's gone quick. There, there is no hesitation with him. He, he goes through his progression. He hits the receiver that he finds it's open or that has a little bit of room. And like I said, it's one, it's a learning curve. He has right. to learn that, uh, you know, high school, he could get away with that. Early on in college, he can get away with that. All of a sudden you start playing against juniors, seniors at these bigger institutions. They have just as much speed as he does. And as the wide receiver does, and they read the pass as well as his wide receiver does, he's got to he's got to pull back on it a little bit. Maybe not try to put it into some tight spaces like he he's used to doing. But it's a learning curve, and and I really honestly, deep down in my heart, Eric, I believe that this kid deserves a shot in the NFL because he's that good of a quarterback. Listen, anytime you can throw one up the long ball like Russell Wilson and just have it land only where your wide receiver can catch it, that is something that need, that cannot be ignored. So right. for, for all the intangibles that he checks, if, if his only, if the only blemish, let's just say, is the fact that in tight windows, you know, his, his accuracy is just not as great, that is something that is worked on. And as long as this young man is coachable, you're right. There's no reason why people should not, coaches, teams, organizations, should not pick up this young man. Right. Oh, Uncle Jay, I'm ecstatic. I'm ecstatic right now. You have no, my mind is just blown with everything. I'm so excited to see well, you and Greg and Scott you, and everybody. Let me blow your mind one more time. Sure, please do. We had a first this year with the National Scouting Combine. We had a young lady sign up. Six Why two, am I only two, hearing about this now? 6'2", 215 linebacker. She is a monster on the field. Okay. We've, talk, we've talked to her. We're, we're, we're not positive she's going to be able to work it out with her work schedule and be able to attend. But I just wanted people to know that Janitra Shields, this girl can play. And I know there's women professional teams out there that are looking for players and everything like that. If there's any coaches out there or GMs from the women's professional leagues that are looking for somebody like her, this girl can play. Now, is there some things she needs to work on? Yeah. And I talked to Janitra about that uh, yesterday on the phone with her. I said, you know, you got to be able to take coaching. You got to be able to take criticism. Uh, I said, your hips are a little bit tight when you try to rush in off the side. You know, she doesn't cut the corner quite as well as Aaron Donaldson, as some of these other guys we've talked about. Right. But at the level she's playing right now, she's she's heads and shoulders, not only physically, but athletically, she's heads and shoulders ab above the girls that she's playing against. I really hope that she is able to attend the event just so we can get some good numbers on her and we can help her continue to play football. She told us yesterday on a conference call, Jimmy and I were talking to her, uh, that she was going to play football until they had to drag her off of the gridiron. I, it, it, hey, interested shows up, Uncle Jay. You got to tell committed to go home. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Right. Right. So, wow. I'm 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 excited. I hope she does show up. I'm 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 going to be looking. I am going to be looking for her as well as the rest of the gentlemen. Let's not get it twisted. I'm just excited to be a part of the event. 
10th year, again, National Scouting Combine, Grand Park Events Center, coming up in three days, March 7th to the 11th. Uncle Jay, appreciate your time. Thank you so much. I'll see you in a couple of days. All right, Eric. All you guys out there coming ready. This is the only event you're going to come to that all the three major events are laser timed. Everybody else isn't doing that. We're the only ones doing it. We're going to live stream this whole thing with Eric and everybody. Guys, you got to be there. If you're if you're not there, you're missing out. Oh, clearly. If you don't come, good luck to you. I'll still help you out if you call me up. I'll still do whatever I can to help you out. But I'd like to see everybody there. And, Eric, Thanks. I'll see you in three days, buddy. All right, Uncle Jay. Your man, Eric Wilson, sportsman. Look at this. Dropping dimes on me like that. He, he knows that to do that to me. I'm ecstatic for this. Wow. Now she's got in combine three days. Grand Park Event Center, Indianapolis, Indiana. Your man, Eric Wilson, we will be broadcasting this whole thing. You are going to get something exclusive. You have to tune in here. The NS Combine Twitch TV. It's going to be in all our social media links. I will talk to you guys soon. Everyone have a great night. Woo. See ya.